Good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Welcome to the Moron Report here. Shout out to 105 The Fan literally dropping the bomb on us and letting us know that as content creators we're nothing but a bunch of morons so you are listening to a moron and as always i appreciate you guys because we are getting so close to 100,000 subscribers we're less than 2,000 away i don't know exactly yet what we're gonna do um, I, I, I guess I'm going to do an all-day stream just to thank each and every one of you, hopefully 100,000 subscribers. I can't thank you all enough. And you know, sleep is a wonderful thing because, you know, you wake up in the morning, the sun comes out, you feel refreshed, you feel renewed. Now, one thing I want you to know about me, okay? Uh, I lost a great mentor and friend of mine Alex Lucas, okay? Alex taught me so much about being a man, about being a father, about being a contractor and so forth, and life. And because of people like him, it's made me the person that I am. I met Alex um, because of my brother, who they had a job at the courthouse where they had to build a platform for a judge's bench, and they're going through the architectural plans, and they couldn't get it figured out. My brother Rondo said, Mark, Mark can get a figure for you. And so he called me up, and I went over there, and I went over, and I looked at the plans and everything else, and I said, you can't build it by what's drawn on here in the, paper, uh, you know, in the plans. It's, the plans are wrong. The architect's an idiot. And proceeded to go ahead and build it without the plans. And my friend Alex had he had a kind of kind of crazy voice. He said, "God damn, Holmes, you fix that fuck up. You're a fuck up fixer." And for the thirty years that I knew him, he would always say, "When shit is fucked up, excuse my language, call Mark because he's the fuck up fixer." That's what I was known as. And so a lot of times I get jobs, places like this red brick house. And if you guys have seen how this place was a year ago, it's amazing that I'm sitting here with a studio inside of it. This place was fucked up and I fixed it. Maybe Jerry Jones would hire me and maybe I could come in and try and fix the fuck ups there. But I doubt that that'll actually happen. So. I've been trying to put together, because a lot of times I'll wake up in the middle of the night with a solution on how to build something that other people can't. And it hit me last night, trying to connect the dots of everything that's gone on. Okay, point number one. This off-season is different than other off-seasons by a couple of little things. Now, see, I want you to understand, first of all, you're not going to get the Cowboys to change everything that they do, okay? They're not going to be a big player early on in free agency. They're not going to spend a lot of money for a player, rightly or wrongly in your mind. But see, you can look at some of the things that have happened. Because I can remember when we heard that Russell Wilson, the agent, was saying one of the places Russell Wilson would like to play was the Cowboys. And we had people say, you know, trade Dak and get Russell Wilson. And I said, you know, it's going to cost you a lot of, you know, draft picks and things. And you, unless Russell Wilson is bringing the um, Legion of Boom defense with them, you're not winning the Super Bowl. And you saw Denver do just that. And now they've got an $80 million dead money hit and they literally fire selling the team. I can remember when people said, you know, Deshaun Watson, if we just had Deshaun Watson, we'd be winning Super Bowls. And you saw the Cleveland Browns go out and spend $230 million to get him. And, of course, how's that worked out? And I can even remember Von Miller working out with DeMarcus Ware and saying, Cowboys, pick up the phone, call me. Now, you know, sliding mirrors, if you've seen that movie and things, there's no, you know, it may be if he wasn't in Buffalo and Dallas, he didn't get the injuries. But you can look at how he has been an anchor around the neck 
of the Buffalo Bills with that contract and has been injury plagued. So when you do make a mistake on one of those big free agents like that, it can really set you back. Now, you, that's not to say that every one of those deals ends up being a mistake. You can see where, you know, the Eagles ended up trading for A.J. Brown and giving a first-round pick, paid dividends. In fact, you could look at the Eagles when they went to the Super Bowl that year, and they came up roses on every offseason move they made, which was not normal, along with having a team that stayed healthy. And those are things that have to happen when you, you know, to become a Super Bowl team. They came close. They should have won it. They were the best team. It hurts me to say that, but they were. Last year, they didn't hit so much on those moves. You know, when they made the trades for like Kevin Bayard, that one didn't exactly, you know, pan out as well as they did. You can look at Jordan Davis and say that was the number one pick that they moved up for. He hasn't really paid that much dividends for what they spent on him. And that's where they have to go out in free agency to get other guys to fill in because they're not doing as good in the draft per se. Now, Eagle fans will argue with me, but see, the thing about the Cowboys, their problem is a problem that a lot of teams would like to have. The fact that you have some players that are deserving of having contracts that are top-tier ones. You drafted guys. You didn't sign them as free agents, and you do have to pay them. Okay. Now, understand... We have been in this situation many times before. In fact, the last three years, we have gone through and said, Mike McCarthy's getting fired at the end of this year. I mean, you know, Mike McCarthy's got to go. And yet he's still here. We've had off seasons just like this the last three years where we signed anybody. And as bad as it feels to you right now, and let me remind you how bad it's been. This was from 105 The Fan two years ago. Think about this. Yes. So their flagship station saying, oh, thank God we can talk about the commanders now. <laughs> no, no longer affiliated with them. Right. So, but I looked at really, when I, Kevin, when I looked at just like a day-by-day timeline, you know, they beat the Eagles on January 8th. They lost two out of their three games, right? They blamed the officials for basically two of the three losses, which is terrible. Dak Prescott sits there and endorses fans throwing junk at officials after the San Francisco game. He has to come out and apologize. You've got a PR director who retires. Nobody, no big deal. Two weeks later, he has, there's this horrible story about him being accused of voyeurism, which he denied. Yep. But the Cowboys have to throw a $2.5 million check at four cheerleaders. Dak Prescott has another surgery. The Cowboys trade a wide receiver that they used the number one pick on back in 2018 in exchange for a fifth because the coaching staff doesn't like him, right? Then they give all this money to a guy who tore his ACL on January 2nd. Michael Gallup's not going to be ready for camp, right? Tank Lawrence is their best pass rusher. He comes back, which is, that's a highlight. Jerry Jones gets named in a, you know, Springer-like lawsuit. (laughs) Randy Gregory whom the Cowboys stuck by despite the fact that he had done nothing for them for years, gives them the middle finger, right, on a flip. Then they've got to cut Lyle Collins because the coaching staff didn't like him. But they kept their punter. (laughs) (laughs) Mac, Mac, why why is Steven Jones the Alan Greenspan of the NFL? (laughs) That's a great one-liner, by the way. Thank you very much. Uh, because it's so, we see all these teams talk about we're in cap hell, we're in cap hell, and then they go out and they trade for Tyreek Hill or they make these giant moves and add this big contract. I know the salary cap is a real thing, and you know I've talked to Stephen Jones, whom I like a lot, and he's he has come to ad- admit and embrace the idea if you're going into free agency, that means you're overspending on that player because you made a big mistake two or three years ago. Okay, that's fine. That's that sound philosophy. Yeah. And are you getting any better? Are the Dallas Cowboys today? No. Today on March twenty third, pardon March, March twenty fifth. Are they any better today, Sean? No. No way. We're on. Okay. And no one, and no one, not even the biggest Homer fan. Okay, I'll, I'll leave it right there because you know he called us all morons, Sean. Sean. We're morons. Ooh, look at me. Okay. All right. So think about where we were right then. Okay. That was two years ago. We got rid of Amari Cooper. And here were our free agent signings then. 
we re-signed Dorrance Armstrong. And, of course, you know, uh, Stephen Jones famously said he's right there with production of Randy Gregory. Actually, I'd say he's done better. Um, Dante Fowler. At the time, he was coming off of a four-sack season with uh, the Atlanta Falcons and looking like he was done. We re-signed Leighton Vanderash, coming off injury. We signed Malik Hooker, who was coming off of, uh, was it uh, Achilles? Carlos Watkins, defensive lineman. Jake McQuaid, Brent Urban. We re-signed Michael Gallup to a new contract. We brought back our punter, Brian Anglar, who was, of course, a uh, uh, pro bowler. J. Ron Curse, and we signed James Washington. So keep in mind, that was the worst offseason ever. And when you look at all of the signings that we did, we screwed the pooch with Michael Gallup. James Washington, the unicorn, played in, I don't know, um, uh, one game or two games and had basically three passes to him and I think a drop. Uh, Brent Urban is actually now in Baltimore. Um, J. Ron Curse is still, of course, here. Leighton Vander Esch is injured. So when you sit here and think, we were doing this exact same thing 2022, and that's what the response was, and we won 12 games. Uh, granted, we didn't go to the Super Bowl. But when you looked at how we did there, this is the same time that Miami is going out and they're getting guys like Tariq Hill. Did getting Tariq Hill get Miami the Super Bowl? Because the last I checked, Miami is beginning to have to gut their roster. Now, here's where I'm going to give you some hope. Here's where I'm going to give you some hope. Because typically, in free agency, what the Cowboys are doing is you listen to Stephen Jones. You may not like Stephen Jones, but Stephen Jones will tell you exactly what is on his mind. He's not going to sugarcoat it. He's not going to bullshit you like Jerry Jones. Typically, what you hear from Stephen Jones is, we believe in our own guys. Right? I haven't heard him say that this year. Now, here's the second part of this that got me thinking, and I woke up in, in a cold sweat last night thinking about this. A, Jerry Jones saying we're all in. And everybody's saying, you're not doing anything to be all in. Maybe, maybe not. The next part of it was when he was asked about Cowboys culture, he said if the culture is running the football and stopping the run, running the football and stopping the run, if that's culture, then we have a culture problem. Take a look. Now, now, now here's where you put it together. Problems we had running the football. Rico, not brought back. Tony Pollard, thanks a lot, buddy. You're gone. Now, I don't know that they're going to address that or not. We as fans have talked about um, Biotish being a letdown after what we've had with Travis Frederick. We know that that has been a weak spot on the offensive line for quite a while. Bye. We're going to replace you. Tyron Smith, all pro last year. First year that he's gotten 13 games. But the reality is on Tyron Smith is they know Tyron Smith, and he may come back, but Tyron Smith, your best ability is your availability. And so we figure the Cowboys are going to be going for an offensive lineman to the first round of the draft. So one thing you can say is every time they've drafted an offensive lineman in the first round, they've been players. And if they can get another stud, you know, like we've gotten with Tyler Smith on the offensive line, be it at tackle, guard, or center, we will be in better shape to run the football. So Jerry Jones saying we got a culture problem running the football. Maybe you get a nice running back in the second round. You're not paying a whole lot for him. If you can do those two things, if you end up drafting a running back, a good running back in the draft, and a starting offensive lineman, you have taken care of one of those culture problems. Second part of this, the Cowboys have signed um, none of their free agents. Typically, 
our free agent moves are we believe in our own guys and we're going to hold on to our Dante Fowlers. We're going to hold on to um, our Dorrance Armstrongs. Bye. See you. Later on, peace out. And we've not talked to any of those. Now, free agency. We know right now Dorrance Armstrong got $15 million. $15 million a year. You can't rebuild this whole line and stuff spending $15 million on one guy. And I say that when I think about Dorrance Armstrong, he benefited a lot because of Micah Parsons being on the other side and not having to be an every down player. And the Cowboys, of course, having the blowout wins that they had where you could pin your ears back. If I'm fresh and I know I am rushing the passer, I have a better chance at getting to the quarterback. The thing is, when you look at Navelle Gallimore, the Canadian bulldozer, when you look at Dante Fowler, when you look at Dorrance Armstrong, these guys are not run stoppers. They're pass rushers. They're light in the ass. So now, we knew we ended up taking a safety to play linebacker. Eric Kendrick is not what he was when he was an all pro in 2019. I'm not going to even try and pretend to say that he is, but in comparison to what we had, he's a hell of a lot better run stopper than what we had at a linebacker. And so what I think you're going to start seeing is the Cowboys, they're going to sign a veteran running back. I don't know who it is. You know, um, Dak attack is saying that uh, Dalvin cook is liking Cowboys content and things like that. And thinks that, you know, he's, going to be signed by the Cowboys. I don't know who it is, but it won't be a premier running back. And in some regards, it may end up being better that it's not because, you know, you're talking about short-term gain with an aging running back. I still believe that Saquon Barkley is going to end up being one of those moves that a year or so from now or two years, the Eagles are going to be like, get that bum out of here. And he's going to end up leaving a lot of money. Now, like it or not, I think this is the actual plan for the Cowboys. Have everybody on these one-year deals. That way you're not tied in with the, the dead money over your head. If it doesn't work out, you can hit the eject button. But we're going to build the team. So look for the Cowboys' moves coming up to be defensive linemen that are run stoppers. That's what I would look at. Because now at least... You've got a, a, a credible linebacker. you got Damone Clark that'll come back, okay? And now, you know, you can put him. He's a smaller linebacker on the weak side. You've got, of course, Micah Parsons that's over there. And then if you can get overshone to be able to come back from the, the ACL, your linebacking room looks 100% better than it did last year. Now, we'll see if I'm right. We'll see if I'm right on where we are but understand just because you sign all of these big name free agents and it used to be that the commanders were always the offseason champion and i remember they had a good defense and they went out and they signed uh, the best free agent available on the defense and albert hainsworth to a hundred million dollar contract and it literally imploded so we'll see in the meantime, let's talk about the slow start with the winners and losers. And, of course, they're going to tell you the Cowboys are losers like they do every year. And losers so far. Dominique Foxworth, give me a big winner. Oh, yeah, I think it's the Eagles for the obvious reasons because Saquon is a monster difference maker that they're getting at a very cheap price because he plays running back. He's going to have an impact on that team. But I think Chauncey Gardner-Johnson might sneaky be the biggest addition that they made, bringing him back the turnovers he creates. And honestly, the biggest problem in the Eagles' defense last year was linebackers and secondary. And they get a safety with the attitude of Gardner-Johnson and the playmaking ability of him. I think they are back near the top of the East. Yeah, they made some big flashy moves yesterday, and I love the Saquon. D. Wood, give me another winner in free agency. Man, I'm going with them H-Town boys of Houston, Texas. You hit on the quarterback, guess what? Now you open up the purse, the you know, the bag up for those guys. Daniil Hunter, one of the top pass rushers that we have in the league, going back home to play for his Houston Texans. And how about Joe Mixon making a trade to bring the running back, bring the running back from the Cincinnati Bengals over? Love what the Houston Texans are doing so far. How quickly they've put something together. 
in Houston. Let's go to the other side, Kmart. Who's been a big loser so far? Greeny, it pains me to say, still Justin Fields. You know why? Because Justin Fields is still in Chicago. They cannot, uh, we know that they want to move him, yet they can't. And the longer this goes on, teams understand, the cheaper his price tag drops. And I just think Justin wants so desperately to be somewhere else. He wants to know where his future is, and he still doesn't know. Now they're in a holding pattern there. We'll talk much more about that as the hour continues. And I'll take one here, and I'll speak on behalf of America about America's team, <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys. We're all in. Uh, Jerry said we're all, well, we haven't been all in all uh, so far. In fact, up until late last night, they had been all out. They were the last team to make a move in this free agency, and that led our guy Ryan Clark from LSU to yesterday say this about what the Cowboys need on their roster. If the Cowboys don't get a linebacker, if the Cowboys don't retool the back of their secondary or the middle of their secondary, if they don't find a way to get someone outside of C.D. Lamb to help Dak Prescott, the Dallas Cowboys are not going to be a factor in the NFC. There are things that they are going to have to address going forward, and if those things do not change, this team is going to be in the bottom half of the NFC East. Ooh, you're in commander and giant land when you're having that conversation. Meanwhile, they did finally get on the board. Shefty tweeting last night, they get on the schneid. They flipped a pick, if you will, or flipped a choice. Eric Hendricks deciding to go to Dallas instead of going to San Francisco. So Mike Zimmer wanted him to help his run defense, and he preferred to play in Dallas. So that's where he is headed. So the conventional wisdom has been up here and everywhere that I've been watching and listening to the last few days. Oh, the Cowboys are in trouble. Oh, the Cowboys aren't making any moves. Oh, the Cowboys are falling behind. Dominique Foxworth, what do you have to say to that? I don't agree. They've been 60 and 39 in the past six years and have been in the 20s as far as spending every year. Traditionally, good teams don't drop the bag on the first day of free agency. They don't because they have good players who they have to play. And that's the Cowboys' problem is they're gearing up to pay a lot of good players that they've been drafting. This is as much a hard time as we give the Cowboys. It's been a very well-run organization up until this point. Adding Mike Zimmer, huge move right there to, to help solidify their scheme and be stronger against the run. Like, I'm surprised that everyone is acting like a good team supposed to make a big splash of free agency. It just doesn't happen. It's like the teams who are consistently at the top are not normally the teams that are spending all their money. Why do you sound skeptical of that? Uh, no, I agree with my brother Dominique. Oh. However, one counter-argument to that is, what did the Eagles do? What yeah. was their uh, you no, a no, monster. No. I'm you, still, you right? I'm still right though. Right. No, no, no. Because I agree they didn't with you. Spend big no. money. Honestly, they got a good dip. They, they, Saquon's not big money. Twelve million a year is not big money for a player of that for impact. that position. Yeah. It is. Okay. It, it is for it that is. position. It actually brings up an interesting question. I know we're going to dive into this a little bit later, but my favorite thing I saw in all of the notes from last night was when you sent a note saying we shouldn't judge Saquon Barkley the way we judge other running backs exactly. because he yeah. makes a different just kind in, of impact. In free agency, it just blew my mind at some of the people, receivers, whose names, as far as money, was near Saquon. Because I know he's a running back, and I know we don't pay running backs, but he's, he's different. not a running Christian back. Christian McCaffrey's different. These guys are focal points of offenses, and it just, it, it saddens me to see what happens. So we'll dive into that, but to stay where I was for a moment there, do you feel, D. Wood, as you've watched us, I haven't had you in here, I don't think, since Monday. Mm -hmm. um, so as you've watched all these things that have happened, we were talking about, well, maybe Derrick Henry will, no, no uh, maybe uh, Saquon Barkley go to Dallas. No, that didn't seem to happen. So so, so do you feel like the Cowboys are falling behind? No, not at all. Again, like Dominique talked about, they've never been the team that did just splash in free, the in free they agency. They've done such a great job of drafting and developing their talent that they have to pay their own guys. That's what really good organizations do. They have to pay their guy. By the way, Dak Prescott's sitting on $59.5 million cap hit. Right. They can't go out here and splurge when your quarterback is, t is eating up that big of a chunk in, in, your, in your cap. So they got to take care of him. They got to take care of CD. And they got to take care of Michael. You start doing that. And, and i also add this. We are like... Free agency is just, what, 48 hours or 24 hours? There you go. We're just 24 hours in in free agency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There is plenty of time to continue to add, make trades, all these type of things. Like, everybody Draft. just needs to just slow down a little bit. There you go. Okay, Mark. Look at don't, don't, don't start beef with me. Oh, oh Lord. Lord. Here we go. Don't start this beef. <laughs> yeah, don't start. We're going to have potted meat with you today. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, again, I completely agree with them. Here's the thing, though. 
What did Jerry Jones say? All in. All in. We are all in because I'm trying to win it all. Mm. That is, I think that is the difference because how the Cowboys are, wait, how the Cowboys are acting is literally how they've always acted. But Jerry Jones now making the distinction of, hey guys, this year, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the year we're what? in. But you know what, Kimberly? I think that right, is what's I'm, I'm going to end right there. <clears throat> and what I'm going to say is, what I'm going to say is, we haven't seen, A, we have not seen all of the offseason. We've only seen, we're, we're only in day number two of the beginning of the league year. We've seen everybody, of course, every year go through here and make crazy moves. We ain't got to the draft. We haven't looked at trade situations and stuff out there. Maybe I'm a dreamer. Maybe I'm hoping against something that won't happen. But you, when you look at how things have gone around the NFL, when you've seen teams that have been jettisoning players left and right, there are going to be people out there that are going to be on the market that may end up being players that you can fit in. If you can get your defensive line together, just, just listen to me, which is not a premium place to add people, you know, cost-wise. If they get their defensive line together and get, you know, maybe they make a trade for an edge rusher, maybe they find somebody in the draft, you all of a sudden – could be a really good team. In fact, if you just take care of the interior defensive line with D-Law and hopefully Sam Williams along with Micah Parsons, and now you've got a credible linebacker, you have a good secondary that if you bring back um, Stephon Gilmore and if uh, Diggs comes back really healthy, you got a secondary that is great. So maybe let's all step off of the, the ledge right now. All right, good people. If anything happens today, we will definitely be bringing it to you. And I appreciate you, good people. Peace.